We are back with another full breakdown video. For those of you who are unaware, my full breakdown videos, I find videos or videos that are sent to me that are about, you know, about a minute or so long. They're not that long enough for me to really do the breakdown the way that I intend it to be. And we go through the video one time and then go over it again with our with my critique of it. So y'all see who we hear who's here on the screen, right? And I think, believe it or not, this might be the first time I have a Blackaran entry for the Coonstress. I know you're probably saying what took so long, considering there are so many opportunities for me to do so. But I'd be trying to stay clear of this woman, considering who she is and what the hell she talks about. But this one I could not ignore. And I happened to just be scrolling on my timeline and the amazing Lucas retweeted it on his timeline and I saw it. But the caption is what, uh, I guess you could say, ca uh, uh, reeled me in to wanting to talk about it. But I'm going to play the video. And this is the Coonstress at a Turning Point USA event. One of the few events that she still gets invited to, if not the only, besides Fox News. But that's not an event. That's just a tragedy. And so is TPUSA, quite honestly. And I thought they cut ties with her. But anyway. Let's go ahead and play this and see what the hell she's talking about. We've now somehow gotten into the society where people are pretending what we're doing is equality and it's not. If we have ever achieved equality in this country, then you wouldn't blink if anybody says Asian lives matters, no one blinks. Black lives matter, no one blinks. But white lives matter, they fell apart, right? They fell apart because they actually, and I will stand by this as much as I possibly can and I will be the loudest voice, the actually worst thing to be in this society, if one thing I would not want to be, is a straight white male. For some reason, that's considered problematic, right? You have to be something. That's why people lie. They're lying on college applications. They're like, okay, I'm white, uh, but I'm also trans. And you're like, what? Why are you pretending? It's because, oh, I don't want people to think I'm too normal, right? And people, you know, they're just trying to find something that makes them not white, right? And it's really staggering to think that once upon a time, that is exactly what the experience was for a black American, that being a black American was so problematic that you weren't going to be allowed into the room. Now you have the exact same thing happening reverse, and you have liberals trying to convince you that that's equality. It's not all lives matter, and that's including white lives matter. You know? Oh, my God. Candace, if I could ask you one question, do your arms hurt? Does your back hurt from carrying the water for white men in particular? all your life like really does it hurt because the amount of water that she carries on her back and on her shoulders and in her arms is enough to cause another great flood like y'all heard the nonsense now we gonna go back and break this down i, I would say that the second half of the video like the next 30 second the the, the uh second 30 uh half of the video because this is a minute long is probably the worst part of the entire thing but we're gonna go back and we're gonna play this again and of course this is more of a response to the whole wearing the white lives matter shirt and i think that she probably wore that shirt also so she could come online or go to these different events just so she could talk about why she wore it or to give some baseless explanation as to why she why she wore it we've now somehow gotten into the society where people are pretending what we're doing is equality and it's not. If we have ever achieved equality in this country, then you wouldn't blink if anybody says Asian lives matter, no one blinks. Black lives matter, no one blinks. But white lives matter, they fell apart. See, that's again, she's saying that Asian lives matter, no one blinks. Black lives matter, no one blinks. Actually, I'm not worried about the Asian lives matter thing. I'm going to talk about black people. People did blink when it came to that. They got so upset that they created their own little off a shoot one called all lives matter and we know exactly what they did and then took it a step further and made one called blue lives matter when it came to law enforcement but you know blue is like it's just a representing of a uniform it's not a skin tone unless you're a smurf which we also know do not exist then she goes on to say that you know with white lives matter then it, it fell apart like it's crazy you have this woman up here who is, as far as I'm concerned, ashamed to be black. And that's why I said I don't, I'm convinced she doesn't have mirrors in her home. That way she doesn't have to look at her own reflection. That's actually the commonality. Uh, that's a, a trait with a vampire. But she walks around during the day, so we know that can't be it. And she's far from a daywalker like Blaze, so there's that. But she literally pedestalizes white 
people, especially white men, so much that even they are getting tired of her. And I'm going to actually talk about that towards the end of the breakdown. Right. They fell apart because they actually, and I will stand by this as much as I possibly can, and I will be the loudest voice. They actually worship. <laughs> you are right now the loudest voice, even louder than other uh, people that you're talking about. That's how, how much of a nuisance she is. She's probably the only voice, too. Well, I take that back. She probably isn't. But she's one of the few that gets a platform where she can get uh, get up there and spew that nonsense. First thing to be in this society, if one thing I would not want to be, is a straight white male. For some reason, that's considered problematic. She said the actually worst thing to be in this society, if one thing I would not want to be, is a straight white male. Basically saying that now it's a stigma to be a straight white male in this society. Since when? They have everything that works in their favor. Now, things fall apart for them in, in, in this system that is built for them to thrive. Then that's on them. So I don't know where she's getting this talking point from. Something tells me, you know what? This woman doesn't have an original thought in her head. Everything she gets comes from these right wing leaning uh, think tanks, these echo chambers that do nothing all day but circle jerk. And I bet you she probably wishes she could be a part of it. I have a feeling that if Candace Owens wasn't in the position she was in, she would probably be a ghetto gagger. She pro I'm just saying she probably would be. I'm just being completely honest with you because she manages to perform quite often. Not in that sense, but in this one. Right. You have to be something. That's why people lie. They're lying on college applications. They're like, okay, I'm white, uh, but I'm also trans. And you're like, what? Why are you pretending? It's because uh, Candace, have you seen a co college application to actually confirm what you just stated about them saying I'm white, but I'm also trans? Because I would like you to actually send like people a screenshot of that. Oh, I don't want people to think I'm too normal, right? And pe now peep that. I didn't catch that the first time. She says, I don't want people to think I'm too normal. So in her eyes, to be to be a PC straight white man is to be normal, but everything else is abnormal. Even black people such as herself. So Candace, you think you, you think that low of yourself that you think you're abnormal? Well, guess what? Many will agree with you, but it has nothing to do with you being black. It has everything to do with your abnormal mentality. People, you know, they're just trying to find something that makes them not white, right? And Huh? If a person put down that they're white and they're trans, wouldn't that mean that they're still white? Because last time I checked, trans or being trans is not a race. That's a, a lifestyle or a sexuality, not a race. Something else can go in there as well, but I'm not going to mention it on here. But just know it begins with the letter J. I think y'all might be able to figure out what I'm talking about. And it's really staggering to think that once upon a time, that is exactly what the experience was for a black American. Now, listen to that. She said it's really staggering to think that once upon a time, that is exactly what the experience was for the black American, as if we still don't go through that now. She's making it seem like the time of black people or black Americans in particular, it, it was just a phase. And now that phase has fizzled out and we no longer live under the thumb of uh, Dub S anymore. That we have now ascended to being greater than the straight white male. Apparently, that's what she said. That's what she's saying. So y'all heard that, black people. We are now superior to the straight white male, according to her. I don't see it. I have never seen it and I may never see it in my lifetime of that ever happening. See, she's doing this on a very low vibrational thing of, oh, you know, uh, you know, she's leaning towards that whole great replacement theory thing that they kept peddling out. Then how uh, how ironic she goes and talks to Tucker Carlson, of all people, and he was one of the main peddlers of that talking point of you know you know people are coming in you know uh the browning of a nation quote unquote you know th that national geographic article that got posted years ago saying that this is what the establishment is going to look like by 2040 the 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 birth rates are down for white people 
and a whole bunch of other things. That's what they're talking about. Well, it's not our fault that the so-called master race has weak genetics. That is not our fault. But Candace, let her tell it, it is. That being a black American was so problematic that you weren't going to be allowed into the room. Now you have the exact same thing happening reverse and you have liberals trying to convince you that that's a quality. It's not. <sighs> let me run that part back one more time. Just a little bit. It was so problematic that you weren't. Experience was for a black American that being a black American was so problematic that you weren't going to be allowed into the room. Now you have the exact same thing happening reverse and you have liberals trying. So basically, she's trying to say that black people, because at one in her in her words, once upon a time, we weren't allowed into the room, but now we are. And even that's questionable that the same is happening with straight white men, that they're not even allowed to be in the room. Excuse me. They are allowed to be in the room. And let's just hypothetically say that they aren't. They built the room. They built the table in which that room I mean, and which sits in that room, in the chair, in the foundation, they built it. So they don't have to be in the room, Candace. They own it. As far as I'm concerned, anyone who comes to that table or is in that room is an employee. The one who built the room is the owner. So what are you talking about? Trying to convince you that that's a quality. It's not all lives matter. And that's including white lives matter. Mm. All lives matter. And that includes white lives matter. She thinks she says something so profound. This woman thinks she is so smart and she is so stupid. So stupid, in fact, that many white men in the thread, I'm not going to show it. So just take my word on it. were basically saying, Candace, shut the F up. We do not need you speaking for us. Okay. Because one thing a lot of white men are not going to tolerate is a lot of their women speaking on their behalf, or quote unquote, in the tone that she's doing right now. And she's not even one of their women. But see, the thing is, she has been pedestalized so or put on a pedestal so high by um, white society that she thinks she is the voice for them. And in a lot of in, a, in some cases, they have allowed that to happen. So it's a double edged sword. On one hand, I can see why they will be upset and pissed about why she's getting up there saying the stuff that she's saying, even though none of it makes a lick of sense. And I would completely be on their side. And if I was a white male, I would be looking at Candace like, what are you doing? We don't need you to talk for us. We don't need you as a mouthpiece or a mascot, even though technically she kind of is a mascot. She's the court jester. On the other hand, or on the other end, white society propped her up and only white society is going to be able to bring her down. I kept telling people that when Candace gets her wake up call and I'm talking about a supreme wake up call that she cannot bounce back from because she's had little mini ones here and there, but she manages to bounce back from I'm talking about the one that will literally end her career. Only they can do that. We can't do it. Look at Stacey Dash. Granted, we are the ones that help give her, you know, relevancy and, you know, with a career. But at the end of the day, the people who asked that she kissed so much are the ones that brought her down. Same thing with Paris Denard, even though Paris Denard really we wasn't rocking with him from jumping. Now you don't hear about him no more. Same with David Clark. And so many others, the sambo of this society is going to be bought down by the same people who ask they kiss every single day. And the crazy part about it is Candace has said some things about a particular community in the past that you would think would actually have brought her down, but it only smudged her a little bit. The only person I think that really came to her defense and pretty much saved her was that fast talking dweeby Ben Shapiro. But I find it interesting because Ben Shapiro has some things to say about Kanye West about some of the same things that he that Candace should have gotten uh, taken down for. And his wasn't even nowhere near to what she said, not even close. But yes, she's still here because in their eyes, she serves a purpose. But like I said, on the flip side, on the first side, a lot of white men aren't rocking with Candace like that. Truth be told, a lot of white people aren't rocking with her like she thinks they are. 
But at the end of the day, they gave her a platform. Black people did not give Candace Owens a platform. Black people did not endorse Candace Owens. They did. So she, as far as I'm concerned, is their problem, not ours. Granted, yes, we're going to call her out on the BS that she says, but we know that's what she does to make her money. But truth be told, if they really want to get her or bring her down a peg or two or 10, they're going to be have to be the ones to pull the plug on her whole operation. It's really going to fall on them to clear the table of Candace Owens and only them, not us.